What's going on guys? Jesse from Sled Addicts here. Super exciting day. We're at our dealer, Team Vincent Motorsports here in Ayr, Ontario. And I just got the word, it's September 27th and my sled is in. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, go inside and build it. What I ordered was a 2024 MXZ XRS 137 with smart shocks and with the 10.25 inch gauge. I'm pretty sure I'm still gonna call it a Renegade XRS, but Skidoo wants us to, to call it an MXZ. Uh, but yeah, let's go in and uh, take a look at it. Okay, so we made it into the Team Vincent showroom. I'm here with Cam and we're gonna be building uh, my sled, uh, the two of us together. He's gonna teach me how to do it and hopefully you guys so we can find out a little bit more about the process. Uh, I'm kind of stealing Mike's thunder. The past couple years, Mike's been involved in all these builds and I haven't been involved in any of them. So this is my first time. So yeah, what are we doing first? First, uh, take off the top of the crate and then just... Cool. Sir, good. Are you? What are you doing? Building. You still going to school, or are you yeah. taking yoga? Yeah. No, I'm still in school, unfortunately. It's a lot shorter than it usually is. Yeah. <laughs> when they pack it, I guess for compactness, they yeah, they pretty much make it as small as possible so they compress the. Um, the whole rear skid and don't ship it with the front shocks in and it sits a lot lower that way. Have you ridden mics yet with the new um, the new gauge? Yeah. They're I pretty cool. It is cool. I think really the issue we're dealing with now is when, when we get to the point where the, the like GPS gets incorporated and you don't require your phone, yep. that's probably the biggest shortcoming, but the gauge itself is fantastic. Huge upgrade oh, it is. over the last one. It's kind of nice having yeah. a touch screen on the stick. Yeah, for sure, because they went from the like bare bones, basic, like two analog gauges with the yep. screen in the middle. They had that for forever, and then they had the 7.8, which only lasted two years, and then right to this. Yeah, it makes a difference. Oh yeah, for sure. Now what we're gonna do is take the bolts out of the spindles, yep. and take the two pieces of wood off the track, Yep. so that way we're gonna be able to lift up the front and then put the shocks and the skis on. Cool. I'm just making sure to teach my apprentice. Now we can uh, throw the skis on. So now we can start working on the rear end. I like to try and do it in an order. So I'm gonna swing this out, put a crate underneath the back, and yeah. then when I lower it down, it'll lift the back end up, and then we okay. can start putting all that together. Cool. Hey, while you're up there, do you think you can grab a small jug of two-stroke oil? Need one of these. Oh, sweet, thank you.
All right, all right. <laughs> Anything else? You don't wanna hold on to this? Set no. This side, throw it out? I don't need another one. All right. I got five. <laughs> you no wanna buy them? them. I, I put them on Kijiji, no one wants them. <laughs> 100 bucks, I know what I got. Yeah. <laughs> you for sure want this on? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Speed now or forever. Shut up. Good. <laughs> All right, now we are gonna program the key and everything. Yep. There's a code for the oil pump. Basically, if it's not the same number as it says in the computer, then there's a good chance your snowmobile will blow up. <laughs> That's good to know. So it's, it's good to do that. Basically, what you wanna do is, I believe, learn suspension. Yep. So it'll come up with so every every single one has a sensor in it mm -hmm. so you can kind of see the green and the red bar um in the middle of the green would be center of the shock and then i think this would be fully extended and then fully collapsed okay so what you want to do um is basically there's also a steering angle so you want to try and get that as close to center as possible you can see right there yep trying to get it to zero degrees yep or like that's that's pretty close. Yep. Um, so then steering, learn, and then should go green. Yep. Yep. So now in order to do the shocks, yep. what we're gonna have to do is lift it up. So pretty much we're gonna have to fully collapse it. You got it. Cool. I get to show off my muscles. We can lift it up, or we can use this. What would you? I can lift do? it up. You want to lift it up? Sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I gotta lift it up and hold. You're gonna have to hold it for at least like five seconds. Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. All right, you're good. There you go. You want to do the? Do you want to do it for the back now? Sure. All right. So the full track. Workout whole, for the day. Yeah. Whole track's got to be off the ground. Okay, got it. Mm-hmm. All right, you're good. So that pretty much just set. So how they want you to set it is. Yeah. They want the vehicle off of the ground, so that way the uh, suspension's extended, extended as far as like resting. Yep. And then pretty much learn it all, so that way it knows where that is, and then. Just so I understand, any reason why front left and front right are further to the right than the others? I think it automatically sits out further. Like, okay. if I were to lift the whole thing off the ground without um, touching any of the suspension, I think that these, the fronts are closer to the full extension versus the rears. Okay. Plus I think the rears, they won't hit the full extension because of limiter strap. Right, okay. That Does that make sense. sense? Yep. And then. Yeah, I guess I'd be more concerned if the front left and the front right were different from each other. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But yeah. And now whatever, what's left is just programming the key with buds and yep. looking through. Okay. Program the key and Check then. Check if there's any software updates for the gauge or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, pretty much. Cool. So now I can close that. And then, this is the Bud 2 system, right? Yep. Yeah. So I'm just going to set this here and then grab my other cord for the cool. gauge. So plug that cool. in there. And then we're going to take this and put it in the computer. And then when I rescan it, it should pick it up. And then we'll just hit rescan and it should, if there's anything to update, yeah. then we can update it. And if not, they, they could have done it at the factory too. But yeah, as far as programming, that's pretty much it. And then the, the key itself is already programmed because it's plugged in? Uh, yeah, so I had to program it. Okay. Pretty much had to, it, for whatever reason, it came with all the keys stacked on. And then um, yeah, pretty much just race all the keys and then program that one. So that way, if you ever want to put on an extra nine keys, then. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of guys, because you can do it with CDUs too, right? Like they can yep. take their CDU key and add their yeah, as long as, long as it's a uh, like a desk key, then yeah. you can do it on anything yeah. with a desk post. Cool. So it doesn't seem like there's any no um, updates. Updates, so you should be good. Not as graceful as I wanted, <laughs> but sweet. They always ship it with um, 
oil bit. so that yeah. way it doesn't rust. Yeah. So it's just best to clean it off or else your belt's gonna be slipping pretty good. And final touches here. I'm not ready for that. Look at my face. Does that look like a face <laughs> of amusement right now, Michael? Oh, now you're coming to help at the end of the video. I think that's everything. We got to adjust the track. Yep. Yep. And that's about it. And fire it up. Can we do a burnout in here? <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> I don't know how much rubber you're burning with the ice rippers. <laughs> yeah, it's actually coming off, but we're changing tracks. Really? It will remain a secret what track's going on, but for those who watch the channel, they'll know what track's going on. Not a surprise. Oh, there's one more thing that we gotta do. Dave, you would kill me. If something was built in this building and didn't get a sticker. You know, honors of letting it. Letting it what? Rip a bit. A little bit. That two stroke smell. Oh, I haven't smelled that in a while. So, right now, I'm just trying to tighten it up. The one side, the left side, was a little um, looser. Yeah. So, I'm trying to even it up right now. Cool. So, they're both at 16 pounds right now. The uh, manual says to have it between 13 and 19. Okay. So. 17. Uh, yeah. I usually put it a little higher because your track will automatically kind of loosen a yeah. bit. So, but if you have it too tight, then it's a little harder on your belt. So I try and just go in between. So that way it's not hard on one thing or the other. Good to know. Can we bring it down? Yeah, you're good. Uh huh. Yeah. That's it. That's pretty much it. Cool. So the other thing you can do is kind of look over, make sure the ski bolts are tight, make sure the uh, I think I did an okay shock job. bolts are tight. Yeah, that was you guys did that, so that's not on me. Okay guys, well there you have it. That's uh, the build of the 2024 MXZ XRS 137. Again, a huge thank you to the folks at Team Vincent Motorsports for giving us the opportunity to build it here with them. And stay tuned for lots of videos coming. Uh, we're gonna do an overview of the sled in the garage and a bunch of install videos with a bunch of skidoo accessories. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys.